inspired performance. It's time now for the past picks uh, from David Burroughs of Barometer. He was on the program uh, May 18th of 2011. Your combined return is almost 14% at this point. I notice uh, as I look ahead to your top picks as well, cash is still king as it was this time last year. What was your, your weighting then and, and what is it now? Well, you know, we're, it's funny. We're sort of in the same spot. We raised cash going into the spring of last year with a view that summer was looking kind of sloppy. Uh, since then, we, you know, we were invested a lot of the time, but th again, over the last six to eight weeks, we've been raising our cash weight just based on what we see going on in the market. I think that the next three, four months could be choppy, and we want to have the flexibility that the cash gives us. All right, time now for the Top Picks. Top Picks is brought to you by Questray, where you can trade stocks for $4.95. All right, so inter, inter pipeline, tell us your past picks. Still, you hold them. Uh, Brookfield Asset Management, Bama is your top pick today. Why? Well, well, this is still along the same theme. Investors in general are looking for some source of certainty in returns, not just private investors, but institutions. Uh, Brookfield Asset Management is an owner and manager of long life cash flow generating assets. Mm -hmm. And in a world where you've got treasury bonds at 1.6%, pension funds need assets that can supply them cash flow to offset obligations they have in the future. And Brookfield Asset Management is office space, it's infrastructure, it's renewable power, and they are firmly in the seat of the things that are working in this market. But they're also low dividend, about one and a half some odd percent or so, but the consensus on the street is the stock itself, the Class A's, could climb as much as 13% in the next they year. They have very, very strong cash flow growth. They have uh, a lot of access to capital at a very low cost to do additional deals. They've got lots of capital sitting on the balance sheet, and they've got a lineup of pension clients who want to hire them to manage infrastructure assets for them. So realistically, uh, it's a big problem across the whole pension industry, get long life returns as opposed to a fixed income portfolio mm -hmm. that can't generate the return. Uh, they've got a great reputation. The opportunity to grow is there. I think that it's a, a good, good investment. Why not Brookfield Office Properties, BPO instead? It's got a, a, a wealthier yield and it has a higher expectation for growth. Right, truth be told, we own Brookfield Office Properties. We own Brookfield Renewable Power. Uh, this is a, a sector and a camp that we are firmly focused on in all of the portfolios we manage for our clients. Top pick number two, Dundee REIT. This one's got a 6% handle on it. Right. So when you look at, when you look at uh, the Real Estate Investment Trust, Dundee is interesting. Uh, they've just done this deal with Scotia where they've bought 66% of the Scotia properties. Um, they, had, uh, they were able to raise the mortgage debt at three and three quarters percent. Mm -hmm. They get a five plus percent return on the, on the money. They're only paying out about 90% of their cash flow. That probably goes higher. It's trading as a discount to the group. And the last thing is that the industrial properties they have could easily be spun off into a pure industrial properties REIT, which would probably unearth some value. So you've got a low cost of capital, strong cash flow, strong dividend yield, and you're going to see growth uh, in the dividend as we go along. In the event there is a split, what's your recommendation on that front? Well, again, we most like the off high-end office space, mm -hmm. but some of the industrial REITs have great properties, and Dundee has some very good properties in there as well. Where do you see the units trading 12 months from now? We think that you're going to get your yield, which as you mentioned is very, very significant, and you're going to get capital appreciation based on the fact they'll be able to grow the dividend. So we run whole portfolios specifically in assets that give us yield plus some inflation protection. And in this kind of market, that's where investors will put their money. What about a, a rising interest rate environment? Uh, we're not expecting that anytime soon. <coughs> At what point are you expecting it and what are the implications for yield-based plays? It, deleveraging takes a long time. In the, in the 1940s, from 1942 to 55, rates were between two and two and three quarters percent over the entire period. Mm -hmm. Both of these companies we talked about today own real assets with the ability to raise price over time. So Dundee probably has below market rents in their office space, so you'll see rents go higher and you'll get your yield plus some inflation protection. This is going to be a better protection against rising interest rates when it happens, certainly than a fixed income portfolio. And as we were discussing in the past picks, uh, cash is a topic number three again for a model portfolio because, of course, you don't know what everybody else's position and situation is. In a model portfolio, what percentage ought to be sitting on the sidelines? Today? Well, I'll tell you, we have a pretty significant cash weight right now. In our income portfolios, between short-term bonds and cash, it's close to 20%. Mm -hmm. In our equity portfolios, it would be close to 40%. 40%? 40 Having said that, I think that there are some significant issues that we're going to deal with over the next few months, and there's going to be lots of opportunities 
opportunity to add some positions with very good yields. It, it sounds like by the time the kids start you know, getting ready to return to school in the fall, that's the point at which you might start deploying some of that cash? We're, we're, we'll, we'll watch. We have process that we watch for the beginning of expanding breadth in the market as opposed to deteriorating breadth. Uh, and what you're we, basically saying is more stocks are making highs, not lows. We, we track the percentage of stocks that are in long-term advances, and that has steadily been contracting since February of this year, which means mm -hmm. there isn't enough money getting put to work. As we start to see expansion in those numbers, it means money is actually getting deployed. People are voting with their dollars, and at that point, we'll look to where the money's going. Fascinating stuff. David, always great having you with us. Thank you for coming. Thanks for having me on. David Burroughs has been our guest president of Barometer Capital Management. That's it for this edition of Market Call. If you missed any part of the program, though, bnn.ca has the replay for you. And you'll never miss the top picks. We can email them to you. If you go to bnn.ca, add slash subscribe to that address, and we'll sign you up for the nightly newsletter. Marty says commentary on the market moving stories the next day, absolutely free of charge. I'd give you a free mug, but Annie Bell's already given them away on the commodities program. As always, this program repeats to Tuesdays to Fridays at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 o'clock Pacific. And Mark Bunting has the evening edition of Market Call at 6 p.m. Eastern, Monday through Friday. That repeats at 11 p.m. Eastern. As always, please consult a qualified financial advisor before making any investment decisions. I'm Michael Hainsworth. Thanks for joining us. Mark will be in this chair this time tomorrow.